check. I hope that this is working. Yeah. Okay. Well, if not, I'll uh, do it again. So, welcome to my first official Patreon Q and A. Well, I was having some pain. No. Only been about a year plus in the making. I probably say this all the time, and I'm sorry if it gets annoying, but I can't tell you thank you enough for your monthly contributions and for being patrons of mine on Patreon. Uh, you know, my plan was, as you guys know, I lost my job right before going into the studio back in February, March when I lost my job and then COVID all like shut everything down like while I was in the studio. And uh, um, it was, it's weird cause like my plan was to just go right into being a full-time musician after the studio and then COVID happened and everything like that. And so, um, had to cancel all my tour dates and all the all the traveling and the music I was planning on playing this summer uh, is not happening. So thanks for tuning into the live streams. Thank you for being patrons. I guess is what I'm getting at is that you know this consistent and continual support that you guys give me each month actually makes such a giant difference in my life and my overall budget and my ability to make more things like paranoia, a new start, six is scared of seven, and the new single I've got coming out here soon past ain't nothing so yeah thank you i didn't really have very many questions for the q a and so i'm gonna just kind of make it short and sweet my friend sarah thank you sarah for asking she she said she'd like to hear more about my time in film school and uh yeah there's there's like so much there i could talk for a long time about it and i probably will on my upcoming podcasts and things and if you want more detailed questions ask them on my next Q&A but essentially um, I started getting really into film like in like around the seventh eighth grade uh, you know I always loved movies and we didn't have TV most of growing up until I was like a teenager so when my brothers and sisters and I would entertain ourselves as just watching movies around eighth grade I got in really into like Mel Brooks and like all these comedies like Adam Sandler comedies and I'd come home and just watch like two or three movies every night just have them on in the background wall doing my homework and uh, that, that turned into like discovering Wes Anderson and Quentin Tarantino and things like that in high school and Donnie Darko. <laughs> and yeah, just kind of decided like all along, I think around in eighth grade decided like, I want to make movies, I want to tell stories. And pretty much all of high school and through college, that's what I did or what I studied. I didn't change my major once. And you know, my plan was to write and direct movies moved to the universe or to Salt Lake City, went to the University of Utah to their film and media arts program. Uh, it was a great place to be because I liked snowboarding and I was trying to become a pro snowboarder. <laughs> but no, it was, it was a great time. I met some really great people uh, and learned not as much as I would have liked. The, the University of Utah's film program was definitely much more theory based and it was in a weird time where the technology for all these new really nice cameras was just kind of coming out and they were like affordable but the program i was in was more focused toward theory like watching a whole bunch of movies and writing papers about it or things like that not really production like actually making things so when i got out of college i felt like i had kind of wasted a bunch of time and money because i didn't really learn a whole lot that i didn't that wasn't from like jobs i had on my own that I would go out and hustle on Craigslist or I was an assistant editor on a local TV show in Salt Lake City while I was in college and you know we're doing wedding videos with friends just whatever we could do and that was like how I learned everything college didn't really teach me that much um, and I was like really bitter about it for a long time I still kind of am a little bit because you just get forced to like go into college out of high school you know and like uh, my parents couldn't pay for college but they were damn sure that I was gonna go to college so I ended up just in all this debt I got into the workforce of, in like film and that was hard enough as it is and then when I did get jobs it just felt like it was like people taking advantage of young people <laughs> uh you know that I worked at a film studio as an editor and like I was editing a lot of like Verizon commercials and things like that and I was just like this isn't it. I don't like this. It's not what I was passionate about when it came to film. So I just kind of stopped doing it. I moved to New York and learned how to bartend. Well, I learned how to bartend first and I moved to New York so I would have a job when I got here and 
just kind of let those skills get rusty while I was just kind of getting my feet underneath me as a musician and person in Brooklyn. And now I find myself like itching a lot to do a lot more storytelling visually and just working in the film world a whole lot more. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And that's where that, that Paul Simon cover video came from is just, you know, I got this new GoPro that I'm filming this on and this microphone so I can be a real vlogger. And uh, um, yeah, I, um, hopefully make a lot of cool stuff. I'm going to order a green screen here this week and make a music video for one of my songs and just want to be making a whole lot more things. So those of you that have been on Patreon for a while and supporting me, if you feel like I haven't been putting out enough content, just wait. I'm going to be putting out a lot. And those of you that are new, please stick around for a bit so we can make sure you get to see some stuff that your, your dollars are helping me make. Another question that I had, my friend Genevieve, when I mentioned that I had only gotten this one question, she was like, okay, well, my question is, what are you going to do now to make your film degree feel like less of a waste and a giant just hurdle? And I was like, damn, that's a really good question. And that kind of ties into what I was just talking about, my YouTube channel and Patreon and, and just wanting to make more videos. I'd, I'd love to, I've always had like a bunch of different ideas as far as music videos for my songs and albums as they came out. But as like kind of a one man team, like I don't have a band to ask to help me with these things. It just like, it's just hard to make it happen. It's hard to come up with a budget and it's hard to like coordinate a music video shoot. And I feel like I finally got my feet underneath me and my confidence back in a way to where I can start doing a lot more of that. So even if I'm not just making a music video for a new song off of a new record or whatnot, maybe going back and reimagining one for an old song to try and kind of bring back some attention to those songs because I've got a pretty great catalog I think that I'm really proud of especially now as I kind of look back on the past 10 years of writing and putting out music I feel like I've got a really cool catalog I just need more people to hear it and I'm not using all the tools at my disposal to do that to, to get it out and heard by people and I feel like I'm getting better about it and I think a lot of it has just been a lack of confidence and you know this time I've taken away from drinking alcohol is, and going to therapy and just a lot of things exercising more it's just really kind of brought my confidence back in a way I, I, I kind of had lost for a while or would come and go and now I just feel like so much more sure of like who I am and my message and what I'm trying to get out to the world and what I'm trying to do and I and I've feel better about like not like deserving it's not the right word um but for a long time it, the imposter syndrome would make me feel like who the fuck do you think you are like, why do you think it should be your job to play guitar and write songs it's like when people call me a mooch it really gets to me but I'm like the first person in my own brain to be like get a job you hippie <laughs> and uh for years that was it it was just me shooting myself in the foot because I didn't think I was good enough and now I've got that confidence back and I do feel like I'm good enough and there's like and I've got a lot of really cool things to offer the world and while right now it may not be the best thing for me to take up a lot of space I want to amplify other voices as far as politically because I think yeah you know, there's other people that should be taking the reins and leading that movement and I'm going to try and make sure I'm leaving space for that and not taking up space in that area I do feel like it's time for me to really start trying to just like make music and creative work my job. And if I've got to pick up a shift at the restaurant down the street here and there, or, you know, do some carpentry, you know, that's, that's great. I'm, I'm so glad I have those skills and I can actually fall back on that. But I think the best bet is for me to just really hit it hard and keep going. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please do that. Um, all the things follow me on Spotify. You guys all already do this because you're on Patreon, so you're the best and I fucking love you. But yeah, maybe get your friends to or share one of my albums with your friends. Like I've got a playlist on Spotify that says this is Charles Ellsworth. You just play that from beginning to end once a week. That'll help me pay my bills in three months. And it's like if the more people that do that, like the more it helps me out. So I don't really have many other questions. So I'm going to... Um, kind of leave you with a thought I had the other morning. I woke up the other morning. I was in kind of a funk this week and uh, things just kind of feeling stuck, you know, coronavirus and it being hot as fuck in New York and the, the fireworks going off all night, every night for over a month now. I'm just feeling stuck and kind of sad. And one morning I woke up and I was feeling way better. I just got some yoga in right away. And this thought I had was, 
how funny is the idea of your fear of death 50 years after you're dead? And if that doesn't make sense, it's like, there's going to be a point in time 50 years after you die because you're going to die. So think about how funny the idea of your fear of death is at that point in time. And now try and go and not have such a fear of death or be so afraid of pointless things because in this moment right now, what is it that you're missing? And I hope that that kind of helps you as a, as an exercise when you're feeling anxious or worried or all these things, just like take a moment and just be like, in this moment right now, what am I missing? And if it's not like an emergency and you, you haven't like somehow managed to cut your arm off, usually it's not much. And it's a good point to like zoom out and, and realize that things are going to be all right. I love you all so much. Thanks for the support and for even thinking I'm worth watching a video of talking into a camera. Um, if you made it this far, I appreciate it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you, but you're not going to see this. So thank you. I'll do this again soon. Love you. Thank you. Bye.